Hello everyone, this is Cody Lee of BlackCatBooks.org, author of I the Dragon, Cruel and Beautiful, Rabbit Hole, Lauren Frey, the upcoming Jaw of the Dragon. I was actually thinking of uh, what I was looking forward to most in out of 2023, and honestly, there isn't a whole lot of games I am looking forward to. I expect we'll probably get it like a Nintendo Direct in like February or something that kind of gives a better idea of what we can expect in like in 2023, but right now it's looking kind of barren, and honestly... This is to be expected. Like, Nintendo has made it very, very clear that they they announce games, like, about a year before they come out. Unless it's, like, a big deal. I would I wouldn't even go so far as to say that, like, announcing Metroid Prime 4, what they did in uh, the 2017 Direct, uh, to get fanboys hyped, that was a mistake. They should have just waited and uh, just not announced it at all. To be fair, though, uh, I don't know, the Metroid situation was kind of weird, and maybe, like, you know, that was kind of an outlier. And because they announced Metroid Prime 4 when they did, people have some suddenly stop bitching about, like, not getting new Metroid announcements. So, it's not, I can kind of understand why they did it from, like, from, from like, a, you know, a, my perspective, I think it was a mistake, um, you know, because now they have to put out Metroid Prime 4, and they have to make it good, and, and uh, I don't know, it might destroy the subseries, I don't know, we'll, we'll see how that goes, but, okay, so my, my view on, uh, on the current state of Nintendo is, we're basically, we basically have, like, a really solid first half of 2023, but we don't necessarily know, like, what else is going to come out of, come out of the woodwork, and what's going to be, like, you know, come out of nowhere. Uh, already, I, I can tell you that, like, Fire Emblem Engage and Octopath Traveler 2 are going to be really interesting releases. Uh, for me, personally, Octopath Traveler is probably my favorite JRPG on the Switch, so seeing it get a sequel, seeing them, like, refine some of the concepts, and, and, like, um, you know, improve on them, like, I am really looking forward to that. Now, I know Octopath Traveler is a very controversial release, but my stance has always been that, like, this was a game that was targeted specifically because it was released as, as a Nintendo exclusive, right? Like, Fanboys don't want games like this to succeed on Nintendo consoles, so they do everything they possibly can to say the game is bad or it's unintuitive or weird or there's something wrong with it, when that's really 100% not the case. Uh, Octopath Traveler is considerably better, I would say, than, than any modern Final Fantasy any, like, any, you know, games like Bravely Default, like, there are a lot of high-profile Square Enix games that I would say Octopath Traveler is definitely better than. Like, I think I like it more than Chrono Trigger. I I really, really like Octopath Traveler, uh, is, is what I'm getting at. I think it had a great combat system, great characters. I love the setting. It really stuck out in my mind as just being a great, unique, you know, classic Squaresoft RPG. Like, it felt you know, like it could have come out in the 90s. And I really deeply appreciate that about it. And seeing that we're getting a sequel has has it made making me think that like it's probably going to be like my one of my favorite games of the year. Uh assuming it's good on the same level as the, as the original, which I assume it will be, I am excited to see like where the game goes. So, okay. Like conversely, uh on the opposite side of things, uh Fire Emblem Engage. Uh, after I saw that trailer in that really terrible Nintendo Direct, nothing about Engage really grabbed me at all. In fact, everything about it was disgusting to me. Like, the, the graphics were garish, the main character looked like a VTuber, like, uh, you know, the whole anniversary aspect isn't something I, I think really suits the franchise very well. Like, this is the first time I've ever felt, like, alienated by Fire Emblem, or where I really felt like the weebs were starting to take over and really, really ruin something that I really, really enjoyed. I, I wonder... <sighs> I wonder how true that first impression is going to be, though, because a lot of people didn't like Three Houses when it was first shown either, but that turned out to be, like, you know, a stellar title in its own right with a lot of unique mechanics and ideas, you know, in a really, really dark, <laughs> a really, really dark setting, and, uh, stuff that grabbed a lot of people, myself included. Now, the thing is, though, I was not one of those people. I thought Three Houses looked great from the onset, so I kind of feel like the opposite about Engage in the sense where, like, I really just don't like the way this game is looking out, other than, like, the animations, which look actually pretty good, th there's nothing about the game that really makes me think that, like, it's, it's gonna be, like, a step above Three Houses in any way. Um, uh, even, even if they cut away the monastery, like, stuff, like, the social stem aspects that got really grating to me in, um, in Three Houses, I don't see myself really 
really getting into like engage in quite the same way unless the gameplay is top tier like i i just think the the whole idea of being like some ten thousand year old dragon brought back and like using the the spirits of like past fire emblem characters to uh to fight alongside you i don't know like i i think there was a place for this concept i think there was a place for this idea honestly it feels like this should have been what like uh Tokyo Mirage Sessions was. People have, like, brought this up before, how, like, the whole idol theme of, of TMS didn't really make a whole lot of sense, and how, like, it should have been its own IP, and they should have just focused on, like, having, having like, a, making a strategy RPG with, like, the demons being, like, Fire Emblem characters or something. Like, people have, like, brought this up before. And uh, it feels like Engage might have been made with that concept in mind, because it does kind of feel like what people were, one, expecting from Shin Megami Tensai versus Fire Emblem in that, in that sense, like where you just have like the characters giving you powers and stuff like that, like a Shin Megami Tensai game. And um, I don't know if that's going to work, especially with like the tone they're going for. Like the game looks way too anime. I think I think it's just one of those things that I... I am not really. I, I am uh, skeptical of engage at this point. Like I kind of warmed up to it after seeing like some images of it and some of the things you can do in the game. But like the trailer I saw looked terrible. Now I think lately we've been getting really bad trailers from Nintendo games in general. Like Bayonetta three had like a number of bad trailers that I hated before the game actually came out and the game actually proved itself to be really good. Like the trailers didn't do the games any fa the game any favors at all. Like all like the, all the things I really enjoyed about Bayonetta three, like you know the crazy web weapons the the uh, the environments like uh you know the demon slave like it wasn't really showcased very well in the trailers at all in my opinion like they focused mostly on viola which was a big red flag for a lot of people and i can see why even now like they were like the trailers even though i love the game i think the trailers were terrible and I, I think that's something we have to keep in mind now is that like whoever they're putting they're using to put together these Nintendo Directs, who's who, whoever is putting together these trailers, is not doing a very good job. And so, so as a result of that, I'm legitimately thinking that like, well, is my problem with in Fire Emblem Gage with the trailer or with the game itself? And honestly, seeing what they focused on, like I think it might be a localization side of things. Because like when I think of everything I hate about Engage, like you know, objectively speaking. Like, other than the designs, it's, like, the voice acting and, like, the way it's presented. And that's entirely, like, a localization thing. Like, the trailer just feels like they didn't do a good job selling the concept to me as a fan of the franchise. And um, I, I'm curious if, like, anyone else feels that way. It's not something I've really talked about at all, but it is something I've been, like, noticing is that these trailers have been getting worse and worse. But, yeah, I, I think I am going to pick up Fire Emblem Engage because, you know, I, I, I have similar feelings to, like, Fire Emblem Three Hopes. Uh, Warriors Three Hopes, which I also was, like, very skeptical of uh, for, like, a lot of reasons, uh, primarily because it was a Warriors game. But, like, when I got it, it was actually great. So, like, it's possible Engage is actually, like, a, a new classic in the making, but, like, because I haven't played it yet, I can't accurately judge its quality. And that's kind of where I'm leaning towards now, uh, honestly, is that, like, you know, these Nintendo Directs aren't as good as they used to be, but the games themselves are better than ever. So, like, I'm almost getting to that point where, like, I might actually, like, skip out on watching Nintendo Directs and just watch, like, the trailers for the stuff I'm interested in. And, like, get a good idea of, like, what I'm getting into and still, like, buy the games anyway. So, I, I think that's probably where I'm going to go from here is just, like, maybe stop focusing so much on the trailers and, and like, just focus entirely on, like, well, do I want to buy the game or not? And, and uh, in this case, I think I do want to give Fire Emblem Engage a whirl. In spite of my misgivings, in spite of everything, I do want to give this game a shot. Because Int Intelligent Systems has never done me wrong. They've done, like, you know, Paper Mario was great, has been handled with care. And I'm sure Fire Emblem, uh, in, in this era of, like, you know, becoming a, quite a different strategy RPG than it used to be, I think it's uh, going to evolve. It has the potential to evolve and become even better. Like, honestly. Like, in a lot of ways, Three Houses is the best it's ever been. Like, now, it's not the same game. Like, it has changed quite significantly. But, like, a lot of the changes were... Did lead to, like, a different kind of appeal. And, you know, it really makes you appreciate, like, the creativity and all the all the different things they can do with this general idea. And Engage, I think, is another example of that. So, 
I will be trying to engage um, after all, you know, despite my misgivings, uh, I'm looking forward to it. So, uh, yeah, I don't know what else is coming out in uh, 2023, like uh, Rain Code, like that new Danganronpa game for the Danganronpa creators looks great. I'm really looking forward to that. Hopefully it's good. Hopefully with a big H. I, uh, I don't know what to think from the creators of Danganronpa, but... We'll, we'll have to see about that. Um, it reminds me of Omen Sight, actually, which, uh, I don't know, I just, I, I love this kind of thing. So even though it's associated with Dock and Rampa, I am going to check it out. So, uh, yeah, there's stuff like that. And then I think, like, the, the game we know the most about, uh, the big game of, like, the first half of the year is Tears of the Kingdom. Yes, uh, The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is coming out in 2023. And this was... This has to be, like, the reason I have an issue with, like, the way Nintendo is promoting their games now. Because, like, we still know absolutely nothing about Tears of the Kingdom, right? This should be, like, one of the biggest, most exciting games Nintendo has in store for us. But, like, it feels like it hasn't been sold to us very well at all. Like, it feels like nobody's really looking forward to it. Nobody's talking about it. And it's really hard to blame them. Because, like, what has Nintendo shown off really? Now, obviously, like, if you're me and, like, understand that, like, oh, yeah, they can they can incorporate, like, lots of new powers and, like, there's all these things, crazy things they can do with the open world setting and things like that, who understand, like, how good Breath of the Wild 1 actually was, you'll understand, like, what they're doing with 2 is going to be radically different and, like, evolve the formula. They just haven't talked about it yet. But, like, normies, you know, people like Angry Joe are kind of, like, insisting that, like, oh, well, uh, it's going to be the same map, so I'm not excited. And it's not really hard to find fault in that, you know? Like, that, it, it's this kind of thing that... Is it's typically associated with uh, $70 DLCs like Miles Morales and, and God of War Ragnarok, right? Just the same assets flipped for a new game. And, and people have learned not to trust that kind of thing. And in my mind, I don't think uh, Tears of the Kingdom is like that at all. Like I've seen enough where I know they have like completely new ideas and like they're really, really, really like – really flipping the script of what Breath of the Wild did, and, like, there's radical new things they're doing, but, like, they haven't showcased a lot of that, like, at all. Like, and uh, I'm curious, like, when exactly we're going to get, like, a big blowout event for Tears of the Kingdom, and it's going to have to be, like, next year, right? Like, I think it'll be, like, a big focus of, like, um, the first Direct of the year, which uh, I'm sure will be in, like, February or maybe late January. Like, it feels, February feels a little bit too late, but I suppose they can get, like, the hype train rolling. Like, uh, like, very close to release, um, and, and then just get people, like, excited. And, and that's the thing people don't understand about this, is that, like, Nintendo can technically get people excited about products whenever. They don't have to do it, like, five years in advance, you know? Like, if Tears of the Kingdom gets, like, a good trailer today, like, you're gonna see this, like, become, like, this game that's, like, being ignored by the gaming establishment to being, like, one of the most anticipated, anticipated games of 2023. Like, the reason people aren't talking about it is because Nintendo isn't, hasn't released anything. And, like, it's hard not to find fault with Nintendo for this, but on, on the flip side, I don't think you really need to talk about games, like, that far in advance. Like, I really don't. Like, I think talking about games after they come out is probably a better... It's probably a better strategy tra strategy for Nintendo in the long run because I know people are still buying Mario Kart 8 Deluxe today. I know people are still buying Super Mario Odyssey today. I know people are still buying Breath of the Wild today, you know? Like, I might be picking up a copy of the Wii U version here soon. Like, I know people, like, b get into this stuff, like, later than, like, hardcore fans. So it actually makes sense to, like, focus on, like, games that have actually released already and, like, actually have, like, you know, a following and actually, you know, will lead them into getting, becoming fans of, like, other Nintendo properties. You know, like, a, you know, if you get Pikmin 3 now, you'll probably get Pikmin 4 when it comes out, right? Like, and that's kind of the thing I've been thinking about, like, in the Switch generation. Like, when people are bitching about new hardware and new, new games, like, a lot of them clearly have not played everything that's available on Switch. I find it very difficult to believe that someone who's, like, super into, like, Final Fantasy, for example, wouldn't, and on some level, like, appreciate Dragon Quest. I find it difficult to believe that, like, you know, Mario fans wouldn't like Mega Man or that, you know, Metroid fans wouldn't like Hollow Knight or a lot of these other indie games, indie game Metroidvanias. Like, they're all, all there are all these games that have, like, 
a strong overlap with different genres that certain people just will not experience or play. They refuse to. Like the bit block will complain about Nintendo like not releasing new games all the all the time, right? But like, this guy has never finished a single Mega Man game. You know, like I'm seeing this more and more where like there are a lot of people like constantly complaining about Nintendo not releasing enough games, but they're not playing the games that are coming out, you know, that are already out, that have been out for a long time. Like people like me who play everything are very, very, very uncommon. And in fact, I've become like, uh, you know, I've, I've been cutting back on game purchases because, you know, I, I'm busier now and I'm trying to get like, you know, my writing career off the ground and like doing all this stuff you know, personal life stuff. Like, you know, I woke up today and went to go see my grandma, for example. Like, you know, real life stuff that's that's more important, you know, than playing video games. I, uh, I'm i playing less games because I want to play less games, okay? <laughs> like, I'm not playing everything that comes out because I don't want to play everything that comes out. But these other people are, like, insisting that, like, Nintendo is letting us down, that they're disappointing, that they're not doing enough. And that's clearly not true. Even if, like, Nintendo was only releasing those three games in 2023, uh, you know, Tears of the Kingdom, Octopath Traveler 2, Engage, like, those three games are going to be better than, like, most games that come out, like, on other platforms, like, objectively speaking. Like, there's not really much that could feasibly compete with Tears of the Kingdom. Like, people talk about, like, The Witcher 3 all the time. The Witcher 4 is never going to come out. We're legit getting Tears Breath of the Wild 2 before Witcher 4 even gets a trailer. That's the reality we're in. Like, <laughs> these other companies simply can't compete with Nintendo's output. And that's becoming more and more apparent as time goes on. Like, and again, this is, these are just the games we know about. Like, there are plenty of other games I'm going to pick up and, like, discover as the year goes on. I'm not getting excited for games that I don't know anything about. Like, is, is Silk Song coming out in 2023? I don't know. I'm not looking forward to it. It's taking too long. Um, you know, is Metroid Prime 4 coming out in 2023? I don't know. I'm not talking about it. I don't care about it for now. Like, again, like, there are games that could technically, like, come out of nowhere and be great. But for now, I'm just talking about the games that I know about. And the games I know about are looking, are looking like they're going to be fantastic. The future is bright for Nintendo Switch.